ma la, numbing spicy. This is the quintessential flavor of Sichuanese cuisine, the magic combination of fiery red chilies and tingling flower peppercorns. It's an overwhelming sensation to feel your whole face inflamed and yet simultaneously anesthetized. But this is also what makes Sichuanese hot pot such an addictive and sensual experience. We can't stop dipping marbled beef slices, quail eggs, and crunchy vegetables into the bubbling soup, which looks like the sputtering mouth of an active volcano. The capital city Chengdu has a booming restaurant industry, and places like this fill up every night with hungry customers looking for a spice kick. But on our quest for fermented foods and exciting flavors around southwest China, we also want to experience how life is outside of the city center, where the sprawling metropolis turns to countryside and where the locals like to spend summer months surrounded by a wilder nature. So we take a trip to a farmhouse in the outskirts northwest of Chengdu, together with Jordan of Chengdu Food Tours and his wife, Chi Chi. The air already feels different as soon as we stop in the small market town of Hongzhichun, crisp and clean, infused with the smell of wood fires. The market is filled with fascinating things I've never seen before. Big bowls of fresh pig blood are coagulating in the cold air on top of the butcher's counter, ready to be slow boiled and turned into blood tofu cubes. We turn around and find a truck selling homemade pickled goods. There's an incredible array. Sweet whole shallots, red and green whole chilies, fermented black soybeans with peanuts, crunchy vegetables. Most are spicy with the characteristic mala flavor of Sichuan cuisine. But there's so much more going on in them. They all seem delicious, so we decide to buy some and try them at the farmhouse. The road winds higher into the hills, where we see remains of buildings destroyed by the massive earthquake that hit Sichuan almost 10 years ago. We finally reach the hillside farmhouse. The owner, Mr. Zhang, skips formalities and leads us straight into the kitchen where he's already busy preparing lunch. He's making a big batch of tofu flour a soft, wet tofu that doesn't get pressed or dried and is eaten straight out of the wok, still immersed in its own soybean juices. At the farm, they still hand press soybeans with an old stone mill just outside of the kitchen. It's hard labor compared to an electric one, but the milk that comes out is foamy and rich, ideal for a smooth, silky tofu. Mr. Zhang speeds through lunch preparations with the sure movements of a seasoned chef. He stir-fries a country-style twice-cooked pork with lots of onions and green chilies. He then scoops out some gloriously wobbly cubes of tofu and leads us to the table. The fatty meat and the creamy tofu flour are just divine on a bowl of steamed rice, but we love even more to cut their flavors with the sour, spicy zing of the pickles we bought on the way. Mr. Zhang notices our obsession and brings in a plate of his own quick pickles, immersed in brine for only one day. It's a mix of crunchy onions, cabbage, and radishes that he dresses with a spoon of fresh chili oil and a light sprinkling of MSG crystals. Pickling vegetables seems to be a common practice in the Sichuan countryside as a way to preserve the abundant but fleeting vegetables that grow in these hills. <laughs> we want to know more about the Zhang family's pickling secrets. Their recipes are extremely simple. The brine for the vegetables is made of boiled water and salt, and it's made fresh for every new batch. A surprising pickle made of wild rapini is tightly pressed into its jars and simply covered with boiled and cooled water with no salt added. 
Like most salt-free fermented vegetables, this one has a soft texture, but the flavor is lovely, very sharp and still bright. I noticed something floating on top of the pickled chili jar. It's kind of A clever improvisation. The Zhangs repurpose used plastic water bottles to hold the chilies under the brine and protect them from oxygen. It's hilarious because it's old school and countryside, but it's all plastic at the same time, right? It was inspiring to see and taste such different pickles made by just this one family, not to mention the range of improvisational and traditional vessels they use. It's soon after lunch, but it's already time to get to work on dinner. A grilled whole chicken marinated in dobanjang, bright red chili bean paste, is on the menu. Zhang takes us across the river to his coop, which is just uphill from the family house. Most of the chickens seem to be within the coop, but many are roaming up and down the hillside, free as birds. The hunt begins. It's not an easy job, but Mr. Zhang knows what he's doing, and he finally reemerges holding a beautiful gold feathered chicken. Then comes the hardest part. We make sure that the bird is quiet during its final moments. The key is to act with firmness, precision, and speed so that the blood can drain out quickly and make the chicken immediately unconscious. Taking life is never easy, but an exercise like this is very important, especially if you choose to be a meat eater in this world, because it's not supposed to be easy. Death is a part of life. It's a profound honor to be able to participate so fully in the creation of a meal from start to finish. The whole process from coop to kitchen didn't take more than one hour. Words like farm to table or zero miles come to mind and somehow feel overly complicated compared to the simplicity of Mr. Zhang's ways. It's time for the marinade. Mr. Zhang combines chopped onion with chili powder, cumin, chicken essence, fresh ginger, and a big dollop of fermented chili bean paste. He gently massages the meat until it all turns bright red almost like a luxurious Sichuan-flavored spa treatment. We leave the chicken to marinate and go out on a foraging mission. We climb a misty hillside through clearings and areas of dense forest vegetation dominated by bamboo. Amongst the trees are some old friends like chickweed and some new ones Mr. Zhang introduces us to, greens he and his family like to cook with. His expert eye scans through the bushes with no hesitation. It's uh, in the Artemisia family, it's called Qinghao. So it's like uh, related to tarragon. We move higher up to the top of the hill, doing our best not to pierce our hands or rip our clothes with the sharp spikes on the bamboo. It's already past peak season for bamboo shoots, but Mr. Zhang spots a few small latecomers hiding under the soil. We get to work to help him. It's not easy to follow Mr. Zhang's rhythm. He even has a nifty way of tying the stems together to separate different bunches. I try my best to find at least one good bamboo shoot, but it's much harder than it seems. On our way home, we stop by Zhang's vegetable garden. We pick up a bunch of pink radishes and we're good to go. It's remarkable how much we were able to collect in such a short amount of time, even though, to be fair, most of the merit goes to Zhang's fast hands. It's finally time to cook. First, we secure our marinated chicken to a big outdoor grill and light up a wood fire. 
then off to the kitchen. Mr. Zhang starts shredding the radishes very finely. He dresses them with a mix of rapeseed oil, vinegar, sugar, garlic, chicken essence and MSG and lets them infuse quietly. The second dish is a mix of chicken offal. Nothing gets thrown out in the countryside and Mr. Zhang has carefully removed all of the interiors from the chicken including liver, heart, gizzard and surprisingly intestines which I know are really hard to clean. He stir fries them on high flame. Then he takes out a few shiny pickled red chilies and garlic cloves and chops them coarsely. He throws them into the wok together with a handful of chopped wild celery and keeps frying them until they are perfectly done. The rich offal meat the sour, spicy pickles and the peppery celery create an incredibly refined combination of flavors. Chopstick licking delicious. The roasted chicken is almost ready and we taste crispy, smoky bits of it straight from the fire. The longer it roasts, the more flavorful it becomes. It feels very primal eating chicken like this. You have to be really committed, like almost animalistic. <laughs> it's time to use our wild produce. After soaking in hot water, the thin sliced bamboo shoots end up in the wok with a touch of oil, salt, and a few chopped pickled chilies. Bitter artemisia leaves are quickly stir-fried with dried red chilies. Finally, Mr. Zhang whips up a glorious frittata using wild goosefoot leaves. As night fell, we enjoyed quite a feast with the Zhang family. Everything was as fresh as it could possibly be, and it tasted even better knowing we had harvested most of it from the land around us. Bellies full and dozing off at the end of a long day, it was easy to see why so many Chengdu urbanites come visit these fertile hills for a true taste of the countryside.